the Atlantic coast of France, with its steep chalk cliffs and pebbled beaches, an ideal vacation spot for summer tourists. But in mid-August 1942, this coast was the scene of the bloodiest day in Canadian military history. When the Allies decided to strike back at the Nazis with a large-scale seaborne raid at the quiet French resort town of Dieppe. This is Dieppe Canadian War Cemetery. After the fall of France in 1940, the only way the Allies could strike back at the Germans was by air or through commando-style raids. This is the grave of Private Eugene Neal, the Essex Scottish Regiment. He was killed in action at Dieppe, 19th of August, 1942. He was 50 years old. Private Neal was one of 900 Canadian soldiers who died at Dieppe for king and country. Summer 1942. For years, the Allies have been training in Britain, preparing for their eventual invasion of Nazi-occupied Europe. And now the Allied command decides to test German defenses by launching a large-scale seaborne raid to seize a fortified seaport. Their objective? A quiet French seaside town, Dieppe. This is the port of Dieppe. By the summer of 1942, Canadian troops had been in England for two years, training. They felt they were the best trained troops in the world and they were ready for some action. They would get their chance here on the beach at Dieppe. Eager to see its men in action, the Canadian government has volunteered 5,000 Canadians who, with 1,000 British troops, board their ships on August 18th, 1942, and set off towards the coast of France. On board one of the ships is a young soldier with the Royal Regiment of Canada, 18-year-old Jack Poulton. Dear Mum, I am writing this letter on board the troop carrier HMS Queen Emma. We are finally going to see action. At present, we are headed for Dieppe, a German-held port on the French coast. There are hundreds of ships taking part in this operation. I only hope that we are as good as our fathers were in the Great War. Secretly and at night, the flotilla sails 100 kilometers across the English Channel to a position just off Dieppe. The plan is for the Canadians to land under the cover of darkness and capture two headlands at Pourville and Puy that overlook and defend the beach at Dieppe itself. But the two headlands are heavily fortified by the Germans with bunkers, machine guns and mortars. This is the beach at Puy on August 19th this was the responsibility of the Royal Regiment of Canada. They were to storm ashore, take the village, and capture the eastern headlands. That would protect the attack of the main beach. But this is a formidable position, and the only way they were going to take it was by surprise. We are preparing all our weapons for action, and we'll be firing them in anger tomorrow. We must have the benefit of surprise cover of darkness. We volunteered and trained very hard for this and would not want to miss it under any condition. I know that your thoughts and prayers will be with me tomorrow on August 19th. Your loving son, Jack. As they approach Dieppe, the ships are spotted by a German convoy and the skirmish scatters the flotilla. Now 
the Canadians will arrive at Puy in full daylight, in plain view of the defending Germans. Now we are landing, 20 to 25 minutes late and in full daylight. Suddenly all hell breaks loose. The sky lights up in a giant display of fireworks. It sounds like a thousand guns firing. Within 500 yards of the beach, we come under heavy machine gun and mortar fire. The bullets hitting the hull of the landing craft sound like hail on a tin roof. When the first wave hit Puy's beach, it was met by a hail of German machine gun fire, and the men were shot down as they left the landing craft and tried to cross the beach. The same thing happened for the second and third waves. The only way the men could survive was to run across their fallen comrades and get to the seawall or the base of the cliffs. Within minutes, the battle was a bloody shambles. I staggered up the beach with a machine gun kicking up the stones at my feet. I still wonder how he missed me. As the smoke screen was clearing, I emerged aghast at the carnage before me, and I knew I'd landed in hell. As the Royal Regiment of Canada is being slaughtered at Puy, six kilometers to the west at Pourville, the South Saskatchewan Regiment has landed right on time. This is a German bunker near Porville. It has a commanding view over the village itself, and the plan on August 19th was for the South Saskatchewan Regiment to land on the beach, capture the village, then push up here and capture the western headlands. By doing that, they would protect the main landing on the Dieppe beach. Canadians fight their way through the village of Pourville, but fail to take the heights. And now the German guns on both the eastern and western headlands can focus their fire on the main Canadian landings at Dieppe. This is the main beach at Dieppe, and of course this was the major Canadian battlefield of August 19, 1942. The plan was for the Essex Scottish to land right in front of us in this position, the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry down by the casino, and of course, they'd be supported by the Calgary tanks. You can see a couple of problems right off the bat, of course. The Germans have all the high positions, a defender's paradise. And secondly, this is a very big beach, and 1,500 soldiers really don't seem like very many to attack it. The infantry came in on time, the Essex Scottish landed right here, and the Rileys opposite the old casino. But the tanks were late. That meant the Essex Scottish had to cross this esplanade in heavy machine gun fire, and they were basically shot down as they crossed the beach. By the time the tanks actually arrived, they were able to advance across the beach, but they had to go around all the dead and wounded and get into the city. The problem was the city was all blocked off and they couldn't advance onto their objectives. So after a while, they were withdrawn to this area here where they fired to support the infantry. By this time, the Germans have been hammering the Canadians and the beach is littered with the dead and wounded and burning vehicles. Crouching on the beach with the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry, is Captain Dennis Whitaker. I was determined to get my men off before the enemy artillery, mortars, and machine guns annihilated us. To our right, I saw the casino. We got inside, entering on the run and firing our Sten guns. The building was filled with Germans. The fight that followed, some were shot. We jumped out the window and over the bodies of the enemy to a low wooden shelter. As we arrived here, a heavy concentration of mortar bombs came down on us. It was impossible to move. We lay there for 20 or 30 minutes, feeling great repulsion for every German alive. In 
the skies above, hundreds of RAF and RCAF fighters try to protect the ships and troops from hundreds of German fighters and dive bombers. The RAF fighters managed to draw German planes away from the troops on the beach. But in just a few hours, the Allies lose 106 aircraft. The most costly day in the war for fighter planes. On the main beach at Dieppe, the first wave is pinned down and being slowly slaughtered. And with community.